Hello and welcome to a new video today uh, on Faceless Guy. I will react today to a geography now. Uh, Belize, a small um, country south of uh, Mexico. Um, here you can see it on the map. I will just enter the name Belize. Um, and it is very small. It is um, here. Um, north is Mexico. Um, and north, east, south, west is um, Guatemala. So. A very small country, I think it is um, a former British colony or a, what uh, it was part of the British Empire at some point. It's a very small country here. So, here you see it on the map, on a world map, very small. Let's jump into the video, I hope you will enjoy it. Please like and like and subscribe for the video. Now, I say it always and it's always wrong. Like the video and subscribe for my channel. If you're interested in Minecraft, if you're interested in geography, um, you will find here some nice content. Um, I have a whole playlist with um, Minecraft shorts, um, which made, which gave me a lot of subscribers. So mm, just watch them; they are funny. Mm, they, I, I have a lot of German views, at least um, when it's about German viewers, um, at least when it's about shorts. I'm not sure how many of those also watch my geography videos. If you are some of the people from which subscribe to me through some Minecraft shorts, then hello and welcome to my original content and my main content. Geography, politics, culture, languages. I speak English, I am a German, but yeah. Let's not waste any more time, jump into the video. It's time for Belize. If I told you, welcome to Latin America, the place where people speak English, and to a lesser extent German, you would call me crazy. Well, you'd best start... German? They also speak German there? I knew about English, but uh, that's interesting. I'm curious. By the way, I have changed, I think, also my webcam. I am now not on the top right, but on the bottom right, when I'm not mistaken. <laughs> this was my plan, at least. Belizing that there's a that such it's that there's in such a it's, it's called Belize. Nailed it. Yeah. And I'm not mistaken. Belize is a country with the most different colors on its flag in the world. I think it has about 13 colors. When I'm not mistaken, maybe also 11. But yeah, mm, he will show it to us. I think. Um, he stopped doing this. I think with Cuba. Um. Analyzing the flag in the video itself. It's time to learn geography. Now! Hey everybody, I'm your host, Paul Barbato. Ah, Belize, Central America's most adorable little anomaly. But first, you know the drill, let's dissect the flag. Yeah, later, after the Cuba episode, he uh, made this um, whole um, analyzing the flag thing and answering also fan mail. Not answering, but taking a look on fan mail. Um, on the Flag Friday video, I already reacted to some countries' Flag Friday, Fan Fan Friday <laughs> video. Um, yeah, let's continue. Oh boy, here we go, a flag with a lot of things to look at and a lot of symbolism. Okay, first of all, the flag is basically just a flag with the coat of arms. The backdrop is royal blue with red stripes trimming the top and bottom, a white disc in the center with the coat of arms. The blue and white represent the People's Union Party, and the red represents the United Democratic Party of Belize, the two major political parties of the country. The coat of arms contains two dudes, a mestizo guy holding an axe, and a black guy holding a paddle to indicate the major demographical ethnicities of Belize. Keep in mind, Belize and Malta I mean, uh, the flag, I mean, it's just put the coat of arm in the flag is maybe a bit lazy sometimes, but I like it. I, and in the case of Belize, I really love the flag. It's very, um, I love the detail. So, um, you don't see this often um, on flags. It's such a great amount of detail. Battle to indicate the major demographical ethnicities of Belize. Keep in mind, Belize and Malta are the only sovereign nations to have humans depicted on their flag. Behind the men is a mahogany tree and a shield supported by the hand. Is this really true? Has there nowhere else humans on um, uh, countries' flags? Maybe, I mean, uh, right now at the moment, I uh, cannot um, think about any other country which has this, but. Okay, well. 
of the men, Tirs per Paul inverted, which means divided into three parts, upside down in a Y shape, and the first left argent, a paddle and a squaring axe, and the second one to the right, a beating axe and a crosscut saw, and the last one on the bottom, a sailing ship. These items illustrate the historical foundation of Belize being a nation founded upon logging and the seafaring residents. Around the men are 50 leaves connected by a circle branch signifying the year 1950 when the People's Union Party was established and took- I'm, I, I- I mean, probably there is an um, official definition and um, interpretation of the flag um, on the Belize government website or so, but... Power. Under the men, you have the nation's motto on a curled parchment, sub umbra floreo, which means under the shade I flourish. Now that's a cool motto, under the shade I flourish. I mean, who wants to be out in the hot, humid sun all day? Also, I would like to take this moment to announce that this was the longest time we ever spent explaining a flag here on Geography Now. Thanks, Belize! You just blew Afghanistan out of the water! Uh, um, uh, I, I, I didn't mean it. Ask it. Here's where Belize is located. I, I already am spoiled this to you, um, of course, but yeah. <laughs> Let's see what he has to say. All right. Belize's geographical location is very unique because it's technically kind of considered the gateway between the Caribbean and the Central American region. First of all, Belize is located on the east coast of the Central American region of North America, east of the very end tip of Mexico and Guatemala, with the Caribbean Sea to the east. Although, yeah, is this is this you now um, is Belize now considered to be a part of Central America, or North America? I think I mean um, I think everything north of Venezuela is um, technically North America, um, the North American continent. Um, I think. When you, the continents are divided, and um, South America often starts just with um good um Colombia and Venezuela, but um yeah, also I have seen um the countries of North America um just being uh Mexico, United States, and Canada. So um it probably depends in on uh, the way you divide the um word in. So. But Central America is not a continent. I think it's um, a part of the North American um, plate. It looks like it to the untrained eye. The west border of Belize is actually not a straight line. And in about two thirds of the mark heading north from the southern tip around the town of Banque Viejo del Carmen, the borderline tilts ever so slightly at about a five degree angle and continues up until the northern river in Mexico. Belize has over 400 islands, islets, and keys along its coast in the Caribbean, including one of the largest and inhabited ones, Ambergris Key, which if it weren't for that one small little bi-coastal separating creek, it would technically be an exclave attached to Mexico's Costa Mesa Peninsula. By the way, for those of you who don't know, um, it's funny. Uh, technically, be an exclave attached to Mexico's coast. It's funny because I think also Germany has um, an island divided between Germany and Poland. Usedom, I think, in the north. The Mesa Peninsula. By the way, for those of you who don't know. Ambergris is an incredibly rare and expensive substance used in perfumes, basically made out of aged, waxy, buoyant, flammable sperm whale vomit. Hey everybody, I'm a sperm whale. <laughs> Cha-ching! A lot of the keys and islets are actually home to world- <laughs> It's funny. World famous resorts and beaches that tourists, especially from English-speaking nations, flock to for vacation getaways. The capital is Belmopan, located in the Cayo district near the center of the country. The capital used to be Belize City with- I have to do this also one day. Um, Naming all words capitals in one video. It will be difficult, but I mean I could name all of the countries in the world um, I made a video about this I think also before and maybe I will do it again at some point when I have more subscribers, but um, I can name all of the countries in the world even under 15 minutes, but the capitals I am probably far from being able to name them all um, and even much more far away from Naming them, naming them all under 50 minutes, but maybe someday. Which to this day is still the largest city and center hub for all commercial and economic activity. However, cue the motion graphic. After extensive damage done by Hurricane Hattie back in the late 60s, Belize literally built an entirely new capital about 80 kilometers or 50 miles inland. They chose a really interesting and kind of morbid spot though, because apparently it's only about 16 kilometers away from the crystal maiden of Aktun Tunichil Muknal cave, also known as the cave with sparkling calcified skeletons of children that were kind of, yeah, read up on ancient Mayan culture. In fact, Belize is home to over 900 ancient Mayan sites speckled all over. In fact, the tallest building in Belize is a Mayan temple, the Caracole Mayan ruins. The town cost- I, I have to visit one of these countries, whether now Mexico and Belize, Guatemala, so Guatemala, I think also has some Mayan cultures, but um, 
I want to see this um kind of pyramid, this kind of um places. It is amazing and interesting. Um only 24 million dollars to build or after inflation rates today would only be about 73 million dollars that's actually kind of cheap considering that many airports alone cost several times more than that belize is also interesting because it's one of the only three non-island nations to be part of caricom or the caribbean community oh that would have made such a great transition into the demographics but we have to stay with the format here's what the landscape looks like when entering Belize, you won't Belize your eyes. <laughs> no, but seriously, to put it simply, Belize is a tropical wonderland. Because of the low population density, a huge portion of the land, about 60%, is spent. Um, I don't think I would like rainforest um, uh, too much or to visit the rainforest and perhaps um, live in it or um, live near it because of the um, gigantic amount of insects and other weird animals which probably exist there. Mm, I should probably move to Siberia, um, Canada, Iceland, <laughs> or a country with uh, very, not so many um, uh, animals. I mean, I like animals, but um, definitely, definitely not insects, no insects and uh, so on, but yeah. Let's continue. Especially inland is forest, most of which is undisturbed. This makes an ideal home to over 5,000 species of plants and hundreds of different animals, including monkeys, leopards, snakes, frogs, armadillos, bear sharktopuses, debatable, toucans, cotamundis, tapers, scarlet macaws, and tree otters, and kinkajous, not kinky Jews, kinkajous, y'all nasties. Belize is also home to the first preservation reserve in the world, Coxcomb Wildlife Sanctuary. And that's not even including the coast. In fact, Belize has the second largest barrier reef in the world after Australia's Great Barrier Reef reef and is a hot spot for scuba enthusiasts. Speaking of which, one spot that Belize is absolutely famous for is the Big Blue Hole located on the Lighthouse Reef at Tol I have heard of this. It's, uh, I think it's very dangerous to dive there, but um, maybe I mistake this also for something else and yeah, you will probably explain it to us about 70 kilometers or 40 miles off the mainland, and this spot is a huge circular submarine sinkhole that goes down for about 120 meters or 400 feet, where you can go into the hole and you'll be greeted by several colorful species of fish like parrotfish, angelfish, lionfish, trumpetfish, balloonfish, bear shark to push fish, debatable. Chances are, if you can think of any noun, it's probably a fish and it's probably in the waters of Belize. Despite the abundance of fish and fishing being a huge part of the industry, Belize is actually very concerned about maintaining the reefs and has actually became the first country in the world to ban bottom trawling or seafloor fishnet dragging. In terms of agriculture, about 20% of the land is covered in cultivated land, even though the potential for more is actually totally available. And to this day, bananas and plantains alone make up about 15% of all exports. Agricultural exports altogether make up about 40%. Inland to the south, you reach the Maya Mountains, the highest area of the country, home to the highest point, Doyle's Delight, as well as numerous ancient Mayan sites hidden amongst the hills. Back in the 19th century, New World excavation was like the hottest thing to do that everyone was jumping on and Belize was a favorite spot amongst many numerous British archaeologists but the British surprisingly aren't the largest white minority in Belize you'll never believe who it is actually it's actually kind of funny probably he would not say it's the Germans um he mentioned something with Germany being or German also being with them let's see to make things short, Belize is small but incredibly mixed. The country has a population of about 340,000 people. About half of the country identifies as ethnically mestizo, about 25% identifies as Creole or Afro-Belizean, and then you have about 12% that identifies as indigenous Mayan. Yes, people, that's right, Mayans still exist. They didn't die out. You're thinking about the Olmecs. And then you have about 6% identifying as Garinagu, or people who are a mix between black and Amerindian. About 4% are Indian, like from India, Indian. And here's where things get really funny. Another 4 percent of the population is actually German or technically German speaking Russian Mennonites. That's right. <laughs> That's funny. That's it's indeed funny. Right, Mennonites, not to be confused with the Amish. Although they do look very similar and they have similar values, there is a difference. Originally, they are descended from Mennonites that started in the Russian Empire in the late 1800s, that moved to Canada, then to the US, then to Mexico, and then finally in the 1950s, settled in Belize. Altogether, there are about 12,000 Mennonites, most of whom are ethnically white and speak Plattdeutsch. I mean, that, that's funny. Altogether, there are about 12,000 Mennonites, most of whom... It's funny because, uh, I mean... I am not, I'm not really religious also, um, but it's funny because I also like to dress myself, you know, with, um, I have a hat and I, with, you know, black shirt and so it's, it's sometimes I like to wear this and some people um, said to me that I look um, similar to this and I mean, 
Yeah, as I said, I'm not religious, but it's just funny to see this picture. You are ethnically white and speak Plattdeutsch, or a dialect of German. Funnier still, in addition, there are about 2,000 or so non-white people that have converted to Mennonitism, making it one of the few places in the world where you can see black and mestizo people donning the traditional plain trademark clothing of the Mennonite community. Belize is also interesting, too, in the fact that it is the only country in Central America that speaks English as an official language, and a lot of the people in Belize, though, speak Belizean Creole, which is basic. It's funny because um, in the United States, and in Canada, there is no official language, at least not um, uh, the Jura, the, um, I mean, it's it's not an official language. Everyone speaks, of course, English, or the most, in, for example, in the United States, and in, in, the, in Canada as well, um, but it's not an official language. A heavily Caribbean influenced accent of the English language with distinct vocabulary word switches and written in a very basic phonetical structure. For example, the word language is written language. When we get to the Haiti video, you'll notice that they basically did the exact same thing but with French. Each region is kind of distinct and is populous. For example, in the south, in Stan Creek, you have high populations of Garifunas who speak and dress. At least, um, that's um, what I think he's referring to when he said. Um, uh, that English is, I mean, Belize is the only country in America where English is an official language. Differently from the people in the north, like in Corozal and Orange Walk, which, by the way, has a high population of Mayan people. And um, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, closer to the coast, you have the Creoles, and inland, don't be surprised to find the Mennonites. Eventually, Belize gained its self-governing autonomous status in the 20th century and full independence in 1981, but still remains a commonwealth country of the UK. Speaking of ties to other countries... I mean, um, as um, always, um, I, I guess uh, it gets along, hopefully, with its neighbors. Mm, sometimes it's not true, of course, in some countries that do not get along with their neighbors. Um, but, and I think with other Commonwealth countries, maybe. And probably with the United States, also in some way, because, you know, it's the biggest, the most powerful and important country in this way. Um, at least about influence and so on the American continent. Mm, so, yeah, let's see. Belize is, without a doubt, a joyful little gipper. It's funny, though, because diplomatically, Belize is kind of technically closer to their Caribbean neighbor nations, but geographically, they're still kind of surrounded by and attached to Central America. This circumstance factors in heavily in how Belize plays on the playground. They have a ton of memberships into multilateral alliances, such as CARICOM, Interpol, the ACP, IMF, UNESCO, WTO, WTF, debatable, the UN, IFC, and many more. Basically, if you can think of an acronym, Belize is probably part of it. Nonetheless, recently, they've been working harder to invest in the Central American ties to complement the historical ties that they have to the Caribbean. Spanish is commonly spoken as a second language to most of the population as interactions between their neighbors are common. Nicaragua and Mexico are close friends of Belize as they all have developed bilateral agreements fairly well and conduct business on a relatively well level with each other. Guatemala, however, has a little bone to pick. I am what did Mexico said. Nicaragua and Mexico are close friends. I, I saw um, a speaking bubble from Mexico and I wanted just to read what it said. ...of Belize as they all have developed bilateral agreements um, vamos a hacer negocios, sí. Um, vamos, um, let's go uh, to a negotiation. <laughs> um, and sí, I think, yes. Um, or, oh, um, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. Hey, my Spanish is a bit rusty. Agreements fairly well and conduct business. Ah, it's so cute um, when you try to speak Spanish. <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it was, it looked kind of Spanish. From my perspective. And vamos is, uh, means something like, um, let's go, um, vamos a la playa. I think in Spanish it means, let's go to the beach. This on a relatively well level with each other. Guatemala, however, has a little bone to pick with Belize as they have disputes over territorial claims. As in, they believe all of Belize should belong to Guatemala. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a dispute. Guatemala. In 1981, they recognized Belize's independence. However, decades later, the dispute still lingers ever so slightly to the minds of Guatemalans. Belize is also one of the few countries that recognizes Taiwan as an independent sovereign state. It all started with some Taiwanese Belizean guy named William Quinto, who was into politics, yada yada yada, they built ties with Taiwan. When it comes to their best friends, more or less, they might consider the US and the UK. As a former colony and commonwealth, the UK still keeps a close embrace on Belize, and in fact, Prince Harry even visited in 2012 on a commonwealth tour. In 
honor, the Belizeans renamed a boulevard in the capital as Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II Boulevard. The U.S. has been and still is the largest economic aid provider and investor, especially in funds and business. Doing business in Belize is actually surprisingly easy and only requires a few steps for registration and licensing, allowing Americans to focus on utilizing Belize's tactical position and policies for growth on both countries. Wow, I actually wrote that. Dang, I'm getting better at this. In your face, Mr. Kluttenberger, who gave me an F on my English test on the first day of school. Granted, I didn't do the summer reading, but still. In conclusion, Belize may be both a Caribbean and Central American nation, but in all honesty, it really kind of isn't neither one either. I mean, where else are you going to find black Mennonites wearing bonnets, speaking German, with toucans in their backyards, and English-speaking Mayans diving into 400-foot deep holes? Belize. It's Belize. Stay tuned. Benin is coming up next. Um, interesting. An interesting um, small little country, um, uh, one of the few countries which uh, recognize um, Taiwan over um, the People's Republic of China. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. And uh, what country uh, do you think I should react next to? Write it down in the comments. Um, uh, like the video. I always miss the webcam. Like the video. And um, follow me on Twitch if you want. I would um, really love to talk with you guys there on Twitch and um, talk about politics and um, uh, current events like for example the war in Ukraine or anything interesting um, or other topics um, or we we'll just watch some fun videos. I have just found a really really awesome fun channel um, it is a moment I show you the channel. I have um, watched many videos from him, and he's amazing. He makes awesome content. Uh... Ah, I found him. Artiox. He had just a f he has just a few videos already uploaded. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven videos. Only seven videos. That's a very sad because I, I look forward for every video he makes. I immediately activate the bell and uh, subscribe to his, his channel after I just watch a few a few videos. One or so, one or two. He's amazing. Um. I will put a link to his um, channel in the description. Um, maybe I will later react to some of his videos on Twitch, or make even maybe a reaction to it at some point. It's just funny. Mm, so, yeah, subscribe to him. Subscribe to me, and we see each other again in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one, and goodbye.